and welcome to this video. Normally I do uh, SOLIDWORKS tutorials on this channel, but I have been working in FreeCAD recently, posted some material on the forums, and been asked to do a tutorial on FreeCAD, particularly for SOLIDWORKS users coming in. So <clears throat> I'd like to model a wheel in FreeCAD and discuss how it relates to SOLIDWORKS. So to start off, um, I want to do a what we would call a loft on the spokes in SOLIDWORKS. This is more akin to a sweep in FreeCAD. And to start off, uh, I'm going to start with some of the basic geometries. I want to make a five lug by, say, four and a half wheel that's, I'm going to go with eight inches wide, and we'll go with, uh, say, 16 to 18 in diameter. And so I'm going to start off by uh, doing a sketch. Now, my preferred method is to go to this Start menu and change to the Part Design Workbench. In Part Design, I have the opportunity to create a solid, or create a body, and make it active. Once I've created a body, I can go ahead and start a sketch. And I choose a plane on which to sketch. I'll choose the ZX plane. and I'm in the sketching environment. Now when we compare the sketching environment to SOLIDWORKS, things are very, very similar. I have a spline, a line, a three-point arc, a circle, and so on. I'm going to choose a circle, but I want to choose a reference circle. And uh, in order to do that, I will uh, click this button right here, and that changes these things to blue. Blue is reference or construction geometry, just like the dotted lines that we use in a SOLIDWORKS sketch. When I create this, now I can give this circle a radius. Now, Smart Dimension in SOLIDWORKS um, will automatically uh, choose what kind of dimension to use based on what you click and how you move your mouse. In FreeCAD, uh, we have vertical dimension, horizontal dimension, angle, and so on. This is a radius, and I can uh, make that into a diameter if I wish. And I can give this a diameter of, say, 4.5, and that would be about my uh, bolt circle diameter. So if I uh, constrain my bolt circle, then I have I can have a good idea of how my sketch is going to interact with my bolt circle. So I can start making a sketch relative to the bolt circle. I know I want my spoke to go a little bit into my bolt circle, so I'll start sketching uh, from there. And I'm going to make this will be my spoke profile that I'm doing in regular geometry. And if you notice in SOLIDWORKS, um, SOLIDWORKS changes the color of the sketch based on what has been constrained and what has not been fully constrained. And so you can see um, this is clearly not fully constrained. It is white. And I am uh, coincident onto this plane right here. If I give this a distance dimension, perhaps I can make this, well, give this a horizontal dimension from here to the origin of, say, 1.75 inches. And now if I give this a height dimension, let's say a vertical of 0 0.5. Uh, this particular line is fully constrained. We do not see that, however, because instead of constraining item by item in SOLIDWORKS, what FreeCAD will uh, turn the whole sketch green when everything is fully constrained, and if there is any open or not constrained parts of the sketch, it will not turn green. No part of the sketch will turn green. So we need to constrain the entire sketch in order to um, in order to uh, see that we're fully constrained. So if I give a dimension here, 0 0.25, now we're fully constrained. Every element is fully constrained. Now, SOLIDWORKS, you can have unconstrained reference geometry, and you'll still register as being fully constrained in the sketch. Here, if I delete a dimension, notice the whole sketch is unconstrained again. 
So that is the difference between SolidWorks and FreeCAD. Also notice this left panel, it tells me fully constrained sketch, and this also tells me how many degrees of freedom that I have. I find that to be a very useful feature. So I'm going to start an, an arc, and let me explain this a little bit. This three-point arc, normally in SolidWorks, you click the start, you click the end, and you click an intermediate point. The three-point arc in FreeCAD, you click the center, and um, you start from the center point of the arc, and then you click the start, and you click the end point. And I can snap the end point onto uh, where I have my mouse if I wish. So I'll, I'll add some uh, reference geometry to create a tangent relationship. And I can go ahead and choose these points and make it horizontal. I don't think they uh, snap with that constraint in place. And I'll make it tangent. And this is my tangent feature right here. And then I'll uh, make it tangent to a horizontal line as well. And horizontal. Oh, it's already horizontal. Excellent. From here I can give this a distance. Zero point six inches. And I've drawn half my spoke. I don't think that gave me a constraint, so I'll go ahead and make it horizontal. Notice uh, on the left panel I also have some redundant uh, constraints. So sometimes it says remove a constraint because you're over constrained. <clears throat> constraint. So instead of SolidWorks turning yellow and red, we just simply get a message over here that we're over constrained. So I can come down here and delete constraint 20. Now I can give this a vertical dimension. And this will determine the width of the spoke. I'm going to say 1.75. Actually, should do 0 0.75. That would look much more in proportion and horizontal. There we go. So I'll just hurry and draw half of the other spoke to make a full spoke profile. And again, this is the first sketch that we will be doing in a loft profile. You can make these equal with this equal tool. And I can equal again. And I'll exit out of this equal tool by hitting the escape key. And we'll make this equal to the other arc. Give this a vertical relation. And we'll give this a vertical re relation so the arc knows where to end. Removing a redundant constraint. Sometimes these constraints will snap in place automatically and over constraint, and sometimes they snap uh, when we add a constraint, thinking that, of course, it, it won't be over constrained, and it is. All right, so I'm fully constrained here. I believe I can go ahead and exit the sketch by coming up here and saying close. Okay, now I can always zoom into place by hitting this button up here. And I can give a generic trimetric view right here if I need to with, with this button. So now I want to make a reference plane so that I can make a plane that I am going to loft out to, or in this program it's called uh, sweep or additive pipe, but uh, in SolidWorks we would think of it as a loft. Uh, to do that, I can go ahead and highlight the sketch that I've made and use it as a reference, or I can uh, open up this body, open up the origin, and I can choose a plane. Either one will work because since this is on a plane, it will be thought of as a plane. And I can click this button right here, create a new datum plane. And um, notice it automatically selects my sketch. I can also click this button 
and I can choose another reference or, or anything. So you can you know choose a line and a point or whatever to, to make a plan. But I've got my sketch all selected. And I am you can choose uh, different angles to angle your plane and coordinates like Cartesian coordinates to position the plane. So I want to um, move this plane 90 degrees and notice that that's the wrong reference. So we'll come down here 90 degrees. There we go. And then notice I, I can hit the center wheel on my mouse with left click to go ahead and, and change my view. I can just um, straight use the wheel without left clicking to pan. Now, uh, my wheel diameter, let's say I want to go 16, 17, 18 inches, somewhere in there. So I'm going to lot the spoke out 8 inches. So in the x direction, I'll put in 8. And zooming out here, uh, notice the center of my wheel is over here, so I'm, I'm on the wrong reference. I'm going to uh, reverse that by putting a minus sign, minus 8, and there I'm in the correct position. I'll accept that, and I'll choose to sketch. Now I'm sketching on my datum plane, and I'm going to make a, another sketch. Uh, so how, as I loft the spoke out, I envision the spoke, if I can zoom to the right spot here. I envision the spoke coming out onto this plane a certain distance. There we go. So how high up do I want to go? I'm going to choose two and a half inches. Uh, with a four inch wheel I think that would look pretty sharp. So I'm going to create a line on my sketch and make sure that my line is vertical and I am co coincident onto this plane. So I'll create a horizontal dimension defining how far the bottom of my spoke is going to be. I'm going to call that 2.5 inches. From here um, I'll do a vertical dimension of 1.125 inches. I'll do a, in fact, I might make this a little bit bigger later on. We'll see how we look. Coming over here, another horizontal of, say, 0.1. I'll do three-point arc, and I forget some of my old SolidWorks habits are, are coming into play. Choose the center point, start and end point, and I'll give this a tangent relation. There we go, tangent. It, it defaults to coincidence so when I add a coincident, that, that box just tells me it's deleting the coincident relation and adding the tangent in. Now I'll add a nice piece of reference geometry um, to get this arc to be horizontal, or tangent to a horizontal, or I guess in this case vertical. Oh, I meant to say tangent. There we go. I'm going to add in another line. And back to center. There we go. So from here, I'll do a horizontal dimension. Yeah. I don't know what I have pre-selected here. If you get out of a sketch by hitting the escape key too many times, and that's true in SolidWorks, you can just hit the escape key a bunch and it will take you out of a sketch. You can simply go back to the history tree by clicking on model here and double click on sketch. Again, horizontal. There we go. I'll just make this uh, three inches. Actually, that's too much. So, yeah, I'll go with. How deep do I want that groove in the spoke to be? One, two, five, maybe? There's my arc center, so I can just ignore that. 
Okay, if I have any questions about geometry, I can just simply click and drag uh, to figure out where I am or am not constrained. Looks like I'm not constrained here. So I can uh, add in a, a length of, say, yeah. 0.75. That would fully constrain things. I think that's a little bit too deep for my taste, so I'm going to call that 0 0.5. Oh, that's the opposite of what I wanted, so I'll meet in the middle, 0.35. That looks about right. I'll simply redo that sketch on the other side. Equal. Equal. Again, they start from the center. My old SolidWorks habit is coming. Okay, tangent. Equal. And this, since this is a straight 90, I can go ahead and give it a horizontal relation with its center point, and that makes it straight 90, just like this one is. And we're fully constrained. So I can go ahead and exit this sketch now, again, hitting the close. Now I usually hide my datum planes. I think they take up a little bit of visual real estate. I can do that by coming down here. Notice I'm on view, visibility, false. That's the same thing as hiding in SolidWorks. From here, I've oriented my planes intentionally in a certain way that uh, I've got a plane running through the exact center of both of these sketches. That's so I can make a sweep path, or what we would think of in SolidWorks as a guide curve. So as I, uh, as I do this, I simply create a new sketch for my guide curve. Notice it went into a, a plane that I didn't want. I think that's because I had it highlighted. So I'll highlight the body, say sketch, and now I can visually see with the body highlighted and clicking sketch that I want to sketch on my XY plane. So I'll sketch there. And now I can start creating um, a, a guide curve. Now, in SolidWorks, we're used to being able to reference inactive sketches in our current sketch. I have not seen that functionality in FreeCAD. Again, I'm a little bit newer to FreeCAD, so there might be a way to do it that I don't know. Any active FreeCAD users or avid FreeCAD users, please uh, let me know if there's a way. Otherwise, I'm going to uh, work around that by um, creating a, well, first off, I want to create a B-spline. And these B-splines, I think, are the bomb diggity. They are so handy, so easy to even fully constrain. I would even go as far as say easier than in SolidWorks. So with my B-spline, I simply uh, recall the dimensions of my sketch. And uh, I recall that I had made my sketch. If I open up a horizontal dimension to place my spline, I'd made this sketch 1.75 inches plus another 0 0.6 inches to get to the end of this sketch. And now we've snapped to where the beginning of this sketch is. I'm going to add in a relation. Uh, and this is just to make sure that the end of my spline will be tangent, or I, I should say normal, to the sketch that I've made here. So I'll select this, select this, and say vertical. And now I know that my spline is vertical or normal to the sketch that I've made. Likewise over here, I like my uh, spline just as just to make sure to be um, completely normal to my finishing sketch that I'm going to, going to be lofting to. So I'll select these two and say horizontal. And that way I know that no matter how I position this, the end of my spline will be horizontal. From here, I can choose a height. And I can recall in my other sketch that I'd made this two and a half inches. So I'll get a vertical dimension. 
and go to my origin and say 2.5 and I am on my sketch. So now I can position this how I would like. I think it would be pretty cool to have a spline that kind of goes like this because then I'm coming out, I'm, I'm sweeping kind of real low and then at the last minute curving up. I think that would be kind of a, a cool profile to loft or sweep along. So I'm going to go ahead and close my sketch. Um, if I did want to fully define it, maybe for a video it would be the best form to fully define everything. I'll add a horizontal dimension and make this say 1.5 even. And I can add a vertical dimension to my other part of my sketch. Where I, I'll, I'll say 0.75 even. And where would I not be fully constrained? Oh. Of course I forgot to do this dimension. We know that that plane was 8 inches when I went to define the plane. So it's a good thing that I came back and decided to uh, check and not just make it fully uh, constrained or, or try to do it without it being fully constrained. I mean, So I'll say 8 inches and we are fully constrained with our spline. So we'll go ahead and close that. Now let's do the magical loft. What we would call in FreeCAD as an additive pipe. Or, or a sweep. I think it was called additive pipe in version 017 and now it's a sweep. But of course we would think of it, yeah I'm gonna go ahead and cancel. Uh, we would think of it as a loft if you're coming from SolidWorks. So first off I can have nothing highlighted and click here and it asks me which sketch do I want my starting point to be from. So I choose this sketch to start from and say okay. And now, um, it's, this is my profile. What profile do I want to follow? And so I'll choose the Object button and click on the profile or the path. Finally, I'll choose a multi-section, Add Section, and this will be my final path. And I click OK. Looks like I have a broken face. Okay, so now I am ready to sweep, and uh, I can either, my, my sweep button is right here. This used to be called Additive Pipe, I believe, in 017, in the version 017, and now it's called Sweep in 018. Uh, we would think of this as a loft uh, in, in SolidWorks. So I can either select my starting point or just click this and select my starting point from the menu. I'll choose OK. Now it's asking me what path to sweep along, so I'll click on Object and choose my path. And just like in SolidWorks, we're given this pretty bomb little preview. I'm very impressed with, with that functionality. Now um, I can go ahead and choose um, Section Transformation, and this is when you can do intermediate sketches. You can do more than one intermediate sketch like you can in SolidWorks. Here I just need one intermediate sketch. So I'll choose multi-section, add section, and click on my final uh, face. And notice I sweep right to it. I can always go back and adjust this. Let's say I want to have a lower profile. Um, 
I can go to additive pipe, sketch 003, and I can make this back to 0.75. And I think that's a much cooler looking profile for a wheel myself. So uh, we, we have successfully created a spoke, and we have done so um, remembering that in our original sketch, here it is, we have the geometry for our um, hub. So I'll go ahead and uh, make a sketch. Uh, when I make a new sketch, it's best to have the body highlighted. And I'll choose my original plane and go ahead and sketch out um, a sketch for the hub. So I'll give this a diameter. I'll go five inches for now, uh, maybe 5.25 inches. And uh, I can go ahead and close that. So highlight this and I can choose tasks and it gives me a list of things that I can do with this sketch and I want to pad. Pad is uh, the equivalent of extrude in SOLIDWORKS, or that's how I think of it. And I go, well, I want this to be half an inch thick, arbitrarily. Now I've got my hub that all my spokes connect to. I can go ahead and sketch on this face, and I can add a uh, center hole, And I can give this a radius, or a diameter rather, of 1.5. Uh, from here, I can extrude cut. And as we know, extrude cut is pocket in FreeCAD. And so when you think of pocket, that is extrude cut. And I can simply do through all, like we do in SOLIDWORKS. And we're done. I can sketch again. And since I'm doing a 5 by 4.5, I'll do a bolt hole. That would be four and a half uh, inches apart. And I can make this... I don't recall the exact uh, dimensions of these bolt holes off the top of my head, but certainly uh, 0 0.5 is probably in the ballpark. From here I can uh, select the sketch and pocket all the way through again. And now um, I can I, I can indeed um, sketch out all of these holes <coughs> or I can circular pattern them. Or what we call circular pattern in SOLIDWORKS is polar pattern in FreeCAD. And I can choose um, something from the menu or I can even click on a face and polar pattern, and it recognizes that I want to polar pattern this face. So now I can give this five occurrences, and we have our pattern. Likewise, I wish to also pattern the spokes. So I'll choose a spoke, and I want to make this a five spoke, because let's face it, five spokes are the coolest wheels, I don't care what you say. Occurrences, five. And it gives me a pretty handy preview like it's already been made. And I'll choose OK. Uh, with that being said, we have our five uh, wheels. I think our next step is perhaps, and doesn't FreeCAD have a cool feature that you can uh, even by accident start to rotate the view? I think our next step was just to make these faces round. Uh, so you could do a pocket, like an extrude cut of two circles to make this round. I prefer to do a revolve, at least in this application. So I will uh, model, I've got my body highlighted, just sketch, and choose this plane. From here, I can choose the rectangle tool. I will um, there we go I couldn't actually see the origin there because the solid was in the way 
Um, so I just clicked in the general area and sure enough I snapped horizontal to the origin. If you have problems with that you can always go to the solid. Um, right now I see my polar pattern is visible. I can make this invisible if I want to sketch where I can see my origin and other sketch features. I don't necessarily need to see my solid right now so I'll leave that off. I'll put a horizontal dimension on there to be 8 inches. That's where I want uh, my, my diameter on those spokes to be. We'll probably make a, a 17 or an 18 inch wheel. From here I'll do a vertical and I will choose uh, an arbitrary height, 10 inches, doesn't really matter what my height is, but I do like to sweep or revolve with fully constrained sketches, so uh, there we go. From here, now SolidWorks often uh, gives us, we, we need to draw like a construction line as an axis to sweep around, but in this case I can go ahead and go back to my sketch and close. Um, it looks a little bit funny without being able to see my solid, so I'll go back to Polar Pattern and make it true. And I can uh, select my sketch, choose Tasks, and I can do a groove. A groove is a revolved cut. We would call that revolved cut in SolidWorks, but it's the exact same thing. And when I choose my sketch and my revolved cut, um, I can choose one of the inherent axes on the plane, or I can just make a sketch and and choose that axis as well, but I think it's faster just to choose the inherent axis because we've selected our sketches to be um, you know, quite relevant to our geometry this way. So as you can see it even previews it with the rounded face and I simply say OK. So now we have a rounded face on these spokes. We're moving right along. So now I can uh, take my sketch and uh, make it false. Now I want to do a revolve of my actual rim profile. This is um, kind of a fun part. So I can with my body highlighted, choose sketch, and I'll sketch on my XY plane. From here, uh, this is also a big part in choosing my offset. I'm going to have a zero offset uh, 5 bolt wheel, 5 by 4 and a half, and so I'll have my center line along um, this bottom face where you bolt up. So to do that, I can even add a uh, reference point. I guess a point is a point referencing or not. And I'll choose a vertical on my origin to here and my plate was half an inch thick. And so now I've got this point which will be my offset point and I can add a uh, construction line. I could have just constrained that construction line as well. And uh, I'll make this 8 inches so that this, the end of this line will meet up with the height of the spoke. In fact, I'll make it 7.5 inches. And that should give our wheel kind of a cool little uh, contour as we curve it around. So I'm ready to start sketching. I am going to create a sketch. And I'm going to start constraining. I'll give this a vertical dimension and we'll, we'll go out say two and a half inches. We'll go out to the bottom say three inches and that's where we meet the very bottom of this spoke. So I can move this out and we want this to be eight inches because that's where our spoke is and we want these bodies to meet up. I don't know if multi-body um, features are supported in this version of FreeCAD or not. I know they weren't supported in 017. So 8 inches exactly and that will merge those bodies so it will become one body. From here, vertical and I think this will fully constrain us. 
There we go. I'll make this um, 3.7 inches. From here, um, if I want an 8 inch wide wheel, then I've got just a little bit more to play with. So I'm going to add a little bit of a, perhaps a cosmetic lip at an angle. Perhaps I can make these lines parallel just for that extra, uh, you know, visual factor. And I'll make this the very outside edge. So I'll make this a vertical height of 4 inches. Notice I can uh, click one point and click vertical and uh, FreeCAD will automatically fill in that dimension with a dimension from the origin. Oh, but notice um, it is dimensioning uh, where my origin is and I actually meant that to go to my offset point. My uh, hub thickness is 0 0.5, so 4 minus 0 0.5. And there's the very outside of my wheel. Uh, I can put a little lip right here. And now I can, uh, if I'm 8 inches here, I'll just dimension the very outer diameter. Maybe will make it a 17 inch wheel. And there is our lip for the bead to seal against. From here, vertical. And I'll make this, say, an 8 inch thick. I don't know what the standard would be for wheels. But since this is just a proof of concept, that sounds good to me, 0.125. It'll come down. Zero point one two five. Notice I have one degree of freedom. Oh, and look at that. That is a new feature that I have just discovered. This is well, actually one of my first times using zero point one eight. But you can click on the one degree of freedom and it shows you where the degrees of freedom are. So disregard that last statement that I made at the, be at the beginning of the video. You indeed can see your degrees of freedom now. You just click on that and uh, wow, that is an amazing feature. Kudos to the developers. I am in awe of how well FreeCAD is being developed, truly. Uh, so I won't bore you with my commentary anymore. We'll get back to modeling. We'll make that a quarter inch thick just so that your bead has, has some kind of shoulder to rest on. And it'd probably be good to have an arbitrary thickness right here as well because you never know if uh, something can catch the wheel and you need some extra thickness to compensate. So again, we'll make a parallel relation. And dare I even make this equal? So then we'll have a consistent thickness going the rest of the way down in the profile. Coming down here. I'll, I'll actually add another line and constrain it down here. I guess I can uh, merge these two points together. I haven't merged two points, I don't think, in this tutorial yet. Of course, that's this relation here. And I can make these guys parallel. Whenever I do these tutorials, I think just sitting here watching me sketch is probably the most boring part, but whenever I fast forward, people get mad at me and say, I was following along, so I hope you're not too bored. 0 0.125, let's say. And again, 0 0.125. Oh, and I'm conflicting, so that automatically deleted my relations. So I've got some Oops, again, I hit escape too many times, so I'll come down here and double click on my sketch. I've got some freedom here. So I'll simply give a horizontal constraint. And I've got one degree of freedom in this line. Isn't that a handy tool? These free CAD guys are just awesome. And gals. I'll add in some. Uh, other geometry and make this 90 degrees and then I can give this an absolute line distance which is right here of 0 0.125 so I've got relatively consistent um, uh, thicknesses hopefully 
Actually, I don't think I like that. Oh, maybe because I don't have that. Okay, sometimes I add a relation, and when it doesn't change, I just drag the sketch a little bit. It, I've, I'm over constraint, so I'll delete uh, constraint number 42. And now it's easier to add in fillets um, in the sketch than you do in the solid. So I'm going to add some fillets as well. This is the fillet tool, a sketch fillet tool. And I can choose this. And this, 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 oh, that should be good. And I'll add in a radius. Quarter inch, quarter inch. That's, yeah, I, I guess that's not too bad. Quarter inch. quarter inch. Now this also gave me some degrees of freedom. Uh, SolidWorks uh, works to keep some of those constraints, but here we've got some degrees of freedom uh, because when we add in the, the fillet, some of this was deleted. So I can just simply click and drag as to where my degrees of freedom are. Notice that the overall width that I gave the wheel was deleted. So I'm going to go ahead and give a vertical constraint And we're going to make that four inches wide from the center point. Now I have, uh, looks like two degrees of freedom. This is the most handy tool. I am just increasingly impressed with how good these FreeCAD guys are, are handling this and gals. Um, 0 0.18. And I've got one degree of freedom. Oops, and I've exited my sketch right here. So I'll again make this 0.125. So my minimum thickness is 0.125. I can continue to add uh, fillets if I so desire. You get the idea, and I don't want to drag the tutorial out any longer, so if you'd like to add fillets to make it more robust and realistic, Go for it. I'm going to go ahead and mirror the sketch. I'm sure that there is a way to mirror the sketch, at least somewhere on this menu or likewise. I have not learned how to do that yet. So I'm going to do this the long, old-fashioned way. Uh, any FreeCAD users that are quite avid, please uh, comment and, and uh, show us how. So I'll add in an equal, 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 and I'll make these uh, endpoints of the line vertical. If I can click the correct endpoint, I can add in another line. And equal. equal equal now it looks like it's three-point arc time so I choose my center line I remembered this time tangent equal And in fact, I'll choose the endpoint of this arc and make it vertical.
Tangent. Equal. Vertical. That's the one drag thing about using a lot of uh, these three-point arcs in a sketch. Tangent. Vertical. Tangent. Vertical. My uh, last set of three point arcs here. Tangent. Equal. Vertical. Oops, I don't think I've got a Yep, okay So I have a line here that's horizontal make it equal and why am I oh I'm not constrained because of this arc that shouldn't be here go ahead and add another line and another line and that did not snap so we'll make those merge Make you horizontal. Make you equal. I like using uh, relations instead of dimensions. Like I could have dimensioned that to 0 0.125, but when I use a relation, then I can change one dimension and both sides update. And so it's a it's more of a design integrity and have good in design intent. From here. Checking the profile that I've done so it matches. Oh, again, old SolidWorks habit. I'm going to make you tangent and equal. Good, we're fully constrained. Well, congratulations on surviving that. I'm gonna save, and now I'm gonna revolve. So close, highlight my sketch, tasks, and revolution. We'll choose the uh, base Z, I'm sorry, Y axis. And uh, I'm getting an error. Uh, notice when the model disappears completely, uh, or it disappears in a way that's unexpected, there is an error. I have an idea. Uh, it looks like it'd be what we would call in SolidWorks a zero thickness error. So I'll go back to my sketch, and I am probably getting zero thickness in this area. So 
I'm going to, instead of 3 inches, 2.99, and close my sketch. Again, tasks, revolution. And it has to think pretty hard about a revolution. And that, that, that looks a little bit more realistic. Uh, just to make sure, base Y axis, and OK. And once we're done thinking, we have a wheel. I'm going to save. In fact, now that you can visualize it, I think these spokes are a little bit narrow. Uh, one of the reasons why I say it's easier to put fillets in a sketch instead of a model is if I, if I had put fillets in other places and then I go to update the model, you can get uh, an error with the fillets, of course, and I think it's just easier in FreeCAD to, if you're going to put fillets in the model, put them in at the very end. So when I go to adjust the width of the spoke, I can simply go to my sketch 001 by double clicking. And I can make this a little bit wider, let's say two inches. And to compensate, because I don't want it that tall, I'll make this, um, say, 1.25 inches. And I'll go ahead and close and see how that updates. Notice we're uh, rebuilding the entire model, so it takes a little bit of thinking before we, we see the model after clicking the close button. And we've got some wider spokes. Um, again, a little bit tall now but I think it looks a little bit more realistic. So I can uh, not go to my sketch 002, but sketch 001. And let me figure out what I've got going on here. I think if I make this groove slightly bigger, um, say 1.5, that should calm that spoke height down quite a bit. So we'll rebuild again. Cool. Uh, so we have a wheel, and then we can make adjustments if we wanted to, like we can change our uh, hub diameter because that looks pretty thin where that bolt is, and uh, most wheels would be a lot more thick right there. And we can just, you know, make, make those little changes just like we changed that spoke. You can also add some, some other features, like I can put a fillet right here. In SolidWorks, we would also call that a fillet, of course. I can make that say 0.15. And then I can add a, did I say fill? I meant chamfer, uh, but you have the fillet feature too. Fillet chamfer, that's a rookie mistake. Okay, I can chamfer uh, all these edges. Now if I want to do more than one, I can simply here and here. I just click the add ref button. and then click on the edge that I want to add it, and maybe 0 0.1. That's kind of cool. And I can go ahead and, and keep editing this wheel. Uh, one of the aspects of FreeCAD that I noticed is uh, the, the, the fillet feature is a little bit uh, more limited, at least in version 017. I saw that uh, SolidWorks will automatically taper down a radius um, if you're in a tight edge or a corner, 
and I haven't seen FreeCAD do that yet, so do any FreeCAD users know how to do that? Uh, let me know, otherwise I don't know if that feature is available in FreeCAD. But that's again a basic uh, wheel made. Uh, hopefully that example is good for SOLIDWORKS users to get their feet wet in FreeCAD. And um, again, this being an open source software, I'm very new to it, but I cannot believe how powerful and immense and just overall impressive that this software is being provided absolutely free. It, it blows my mind and I, I cannot thank the developers enough for uh, making such a wonderful, useful, relevant, amazing software absolutely free. It is, a, it is a treasure to use and as evidenced, version 018 is even better than 017. Um, the, the, truly incredible. So again, my my uh, congratulations and admiration to those who have made such a great software. Hopefully this was helpful. Hopefully you enjoy this as much as I do. And we'll see you next time.